everybody, it's Tyler here at the championship, checking in team number 7285, Sneaky Snakes. This is a team that has been absolutely incredible coming out of Turkey. You might have saw them on premier night where they debuted an incredible five ball auto, uh, and they've been taking over Turkey uh, in an amazing fashion. Uh, two regional wins out there, been doing really good here at the World Championships as well. And to help me speak more about this uh, robot, I have uh, Halil, Emre, Barkin, and Khan. And we'll be going through talking about uh, drivetrain, following that full cargo path all the way through. A couple of programming things to show up, and of course, Climber coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. First updates now, supported by Striker Careers. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Striker. Striker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Striker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Fun Gaming League is back this summer with new games, tournaments, and league play. FGL is open to any students, mentors, and alumni of a first team. Get started at discord.gg slash first updates now and add the FGL role. So let's talk drivetrain first. Let's know uh, what you decided to go with uh, and how it's been working out for you. Yes, uh, to talk about drivetrain, uh, we have custom West Coast drivetrain over there. And there is uh, four six inches uh, Omni wheels, the corners, and uh, one traction wheels, six inch, uh, both of the size. And to, uh, to see it here, Okay, please come here. Uh, we have two Falcon each side with ratio uh, 9 to 1 and just single speed, uh, no shifter. And uh, this drivetrain is looks like this. Uh, for, for your drivetrain on here, when you're looking at, at the game, uh, having the two wheels in the middle, have you had any issues like getting pushed around or anything yes, like that? Yes, yes. Um, it's just about to avoid uh, defense in the match. Fair enough on that. Let's keep following uh, your robot. We're going to talk about your uh, intake a bit more uh, and start to follow that uh, cargo path through. So Connor, you're covering that. Uh, tell me more about uh, this type of intake on it. It's a pretty compliant intake on it. Um, and I'd love to hear like the material that you chose on this too. Yeah, so this is our intake. It's a four bar intake design. It's really compact and uh, like doesn't take up much space in the robot. And uh, firstly, uh, if we can open it, please. Uh, we have a kicker coming out with it, so uh, so we have the kicker down here uh, attached with a rope, so we can retract it as well. And then we, for in the first roll, we have compliant wheels to nicely grab the balls and have a good compression on them. And then we have polycarbonate tubes following them, two rollers of it, covered with the uh, grip material that comes with the kit. Sure. So it's really accessible and uh, a great design. We use the kicker to have con constant compression on the balls to not miss, uh, not, not miss any balls uh, while picking them up. And following that, we have our tower, which my friend will talk about. Yeah. So I will keep on with the tower. So first of all, we have two inch mechanical wheels that we 3D printed to get the balls coming from the side of the intake that we just used to align to the middle of the tower. Uh, and also we have one and two versa planetary uh, gearboxes attached to 775 Pro motors. Like they're geared to 10 to one to like feed the balls to the uh, first accelerator, uh, then the shooter. Accelerator is just a uh, one to one Falcon attached to two inch wheels that we are using to uh, consistently feed the balls to the shooter. Uh, and also we have a like thin polycarbonate uh, plate on, under the tower that we just use to slide the balls on the top and have a like small uh, traction grip to like easily feed them to the shooter. Yeah, and, and watching your way forward, it looks like you really haven't had any jamming or anything like that, yeah. so it seems to be working uh, quite well. Yeah, can we see that cargo piece come in? And yeah, sure. uh, then we'll go up and talk about your shooter. So very smooth process right on that. Like here? Yeah, so it can grab from the sides as well as you could see. Yeah, and, really and like I said, I've watched, I've watched you play and it's just been looking fantastic out there uh, the whole time on the field. So uh, talk to me about your shooter. you got a fantastic uh, turret uh, on this and uh, uh, talk to me more about uh, some of the 3D printed materials and everything else that's gone into it. Yeah, so since we don't have sword drive, we still didn't want to lose the ability to uh, shoot from a lot of the places of the, of the field. So we have uh, 
a 400 degrees turret, which is uh, basically a 360 with a little, little margin of error. And we have adjustable hood and a really nicely controlled shooter right here. Six inch uh, wheels uh, to just have the power to shoot the balls. Uh, connected to two Falcons one to one ratio, which we really don't have to use, it, use them full power. We just uh, use them like 40% of the power and it can basically shoot from any uh, distance of the field. And uh, as you can see, le let me just uh, move the turret. Our cable just uh, turns around the turret. There's a prote protective thin polycarbonate uh, ring around here, so the cable doesn't go into the uh, teeth of the uh, turret and get damaged. And uh, here is our adjustable hood from backwards. Uh, if I just move it right like this, we have 3D printed uh, uh, teeth, teeth here, which uh, actually worked really f uh, nicely and never had any damages uh, done to them. So we are really happy with it. Also, we increased the uh, uh, angle of our sh uh, hood with these green uh, 3D printed parts. And the shooter, I think, uh, was the best part of our robot and worked consistently. I would agree. I mean, wa watching it, it's just, it seems like you just kind of lock on target pretty instantly. You're really accurate uh, as you. you come through. Where do you like to shoot from the field the most? Well, uh, in community, there's a place called Donuts Zone. Yep. So uh, basically, that's our sweet spot as well. Yeah. But in case of emergency, like last minute shots, we can shoot all the way from back, uh, like from the dri uh, driver's station. Yeah, I, I would say I've seen you shoot from anywhere. Well, yeah, that. so the donut zone is kind of that area around the tarmac, right? Yeah. Um, as you go through. That's the sweet spot. Yeah, and really. it's been looking great uh, with that too. So let's talk about your climber uh, a little bit more. I'll pass it back over to Barkin. Um, and then uh, we'll get into programming a little bit as well too, but I'd love to hear about your climber and then showing off the climber sequence as well. Uh, so first of all, we just use our telescopic tube to climb to the like six point, the mid bar. Emre, can you show it? After when we just attach to the mid bar, we just pull ourselves like this. And when we get to the like mid bars, these just these uh, telescopes just slide off and just get like under this. And just we keep ourselves on the bar like easily like that. After that, we just extend our telescope again. Can you extend again? Then we use our pivots like uh, uh, which are less powered by a just Falcon motor. It's about 50 to 1 ratio. Like it's really powerful. That we use our ropes to just swing ourselves on the bar. And when we just align ourselves with the second bar, like high bar, we just pull ourselves and do the same thing again to climb yeah. to the traversal bar. And about how much time does that take you? It's about uh, 25 seconds. Sure. So for, for your team, uh, I've asked this of other teams that are really high caliber shooters, is that is there a point like in playoffs where maybe you would choose just to shoot instead of going for a traversal climb? In our regionals, th that's what we do all the time. Yeah. We just try to, to climb the mid bar and maybe the high bar, but we didn't climb to traversal bar in any matches. But after that, like here, we're just trying to climb to traversal the, the, you want the RP right now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. To, to, in case of like any just problems with our alliances robots, because sometimes our alliance could not make to the climb, or maybe they just uh, wanted to shoot. That's why we sometimes just try to climb to the traverse bar. Makes sense. Let's wrap up, robot. Let's talk about some programming on it. So Emre is going to cover uh, more of that. Love to hear uh, any sensors that go into it. And of course, we have a couple of programming features to show off too. Yep. So we have too many sensors actually on our robot. Especially, we can firstly start from the indexing sensor that we have over here, which will just make the ball stay at the place whenever we intake one. We can show off it actually. As you can see, in, in front of the indexing sensor, the ball will just stop and if the driver will try to intake, the tower won't be moving, so we keep the other ball on the intake. And after that, we have since we have 400 degrees of freedom with our turret, we need to make sure that we don't hit the, our limits. So if the turret is on the limit, it will just turn around and the other way. It will just turn the other way, so we can keep the track of the target. We can show it off as well. Timing belt, 15 millimeter wide. Pit high 25 needs a Also, our turret scans the, for the targets whenever it's not able to see any targets. 
As you can see, the hood will be moving along with the shooter and the turret as soon as the distance or the angle of the tra um, target changes. Yeah, so you can see the hood moving along with that yep. as it goes through, yeah. And that's made by only one button. Yeah, that looks so cool, and I, and I know uh, going through all the way, it's been working out great for you. And then on your climber, you have some buttons to automate yep. as well too, right? So, our operator only have three main buttons in order to climb, which will just uh, execute the climb sequences, which is six-point climber, ten-point climber, and the traversal climb. So, our cl as soon the as we line up for the climbing, kind of we just I mean, we just press the six point button first. Match, so we are on the mid bar. Afterwards, we just we just play we just press line. another button, which will start executing the ten, ten point climb, and then afterwards battery. we will just execute the traverse to climb. Help yeah. Them not feel well, seventy two eighty five. You've been looking we'll absolutely phenomenal them. all season. We really appreciate you taking the time to tell us more about uh, your robot. Like I said, the Pride of Turkey coming here and uh, looking absolutely phenomenal here at Championship. So we wish you best of luck, and uh, thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you so much. Thanks to Striker Careers for their support in this video. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.